Hi, my name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist with Pioneer, and it's a cold winter day. It's a great day to be in a shop, do a little shop talk, and for that, today I've got with me Justin McCullough with Corteva Crop Protection, and this is going to kick off a little bit of a series that I want to do, talking about some of our really cool biologicals that we have out. Justin's done some really great work, specifically on Utricia P here this last year, that I want to chat with him about. So, with that, Justin, we'll have you talk a little bit about your role with Corteva Crop Protection, as well as uh, what you found with Utricia P. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm the market development specialist for Corteva Crop Protection in the Northeast. Basically, my role is to provide technical support to our territory managers and our team in the field and also coordinate trials across the Northeast. Awesome. I'm excited to talk about Utricia P today. We started to learn a little bit about Utricia P last year at about this time when it was rolled out as a new product. And initially, I wasn't super excited about it. It seemed like a product that was designed for low P areas. The more I thought about the product though and got to thinking about our soils here in the east where we are so loaded with high phosphorus, I thought, you know, and you start to think about, you know, I don't know that all of that's actually available. And so there could be an opportunity here. Um, and that led us to some of the trials we worked on this year. Yeah, that's awesome. And I have to say for myself, I was the same way whenever it first came out and it's kind of low P soils. I was like, well, I don't know how many low P soils I really cover. But to your point, one of the things that I've been always frustrated with is taking tissue samples and everything else. We might have high phosphorus on our soil test, but can we really drive it into the plant? So that's kind of where some of your studies came from. But before we hit that study, let's talk a little bit about the product itself and how we're going to actually get it to that corn plant. How, how are we applying Utricia P uh, in the spring? Yeah, so as a, a little bit of background on the product, it's actually in a spore formulation in the jug, which for a biological standpoint is really great with what we're trying to do because it makes it a lot more hardy uh, as we get into the environment. So it's a spore formulation um, that we go right into the starter with. Okay. So um, I, in an ideal situation for it is to get it in pop-up. We need to get it in that rooting zone um, and have it ready right when the plant starts to grow. Okay, so yeah, right through the planter, super safe encapsulated formulation that's going to be able to be mixed with a lot of things. I think you say there's just a couple of watch outs that you would call out as far as safety and compatibility. Uh, what would those be? Yeah, the two biggest things um, are to make sure there's no copper in the tank. Um, and the other thing is some products contain an antimicrobial. Uh, it's kind of just part of their storage. You want to be aware of that as well. We don't want to have that in the tank too. So for the most part, the things that we're actually throwing in with our planner on our, you know, in furrows, or if we have to put it through a two by two, most of those are safe. Like you said, watch out for those coppers. And, and maybe if you have something that's a known antimicrobial, but other than that, super safe, pour and go. So tell us about your trials. Yeah. So this year we conducted trials across the Northeast. Uh, we really wanted to get in as many different situations as we could. So we took it to farms that had never seen manure to farms that, you know, have a long history of manure applications. We wanted to get a real representative sample. And so in our initial soil tests that we pulled ahead of time, we had um, soil P parts per million levels of, you know, in the 20s to over 500. Yeah. Good, good representative sample of the East Coast, and I'm guessing you didn't have a real hard time finding the ones that had lots of manure. It was more the other side that was a little harder yeah, to find. Yeah, you're 100% right? correct. All right, so, so you have these variations in soil phosphorus. You know, you go throughout the season. I guess you're taking some samples as far as tissue samples, uh, digging roots. What did you see throughout the season? Yeah, I think we were really encouraged initially because the one thing um, about Utricia P and the strain uh, type of bacteria that it is, it's really fantastic promoting root growth. So initially we were encouraged when we started doing root digs at like V4, we could really see um, that happening. The yield results were very interesting. We averaged a six bushel yield response wow. across the Northeast. But what was really interesting is we got our highest response from our highest P parts per million soils. How do you feel that this plays in the Northeast here? How do you see this product playing? Yeah, I think, I think there's an opportunity uh, to go on a lot of soils, but it's a real opportunity, I think, for you know locations that are very high P soils, um, where they're limited on P that can be applied. And I think it's an opportunity to make P available even early in the season, just from the activity we see, to help when sometimes we struggle, um, no matter what soils we're on. I'm excited about the opportunity that we can bring 
um, onto those soils where we can apply phosphorus, but in some cases it's, it is limiting yield yeah. and we can help out with that. And I couldn't agree more. I think one thing real quick to make sure everybody realizes is when we think about phosphorus, we don't always think about how important that is just for our root growth in general in our plants. And we all know that no matter what we're dealing with, whether it's high yield and needing to get that nutrition out of the soil, if it's drought and just needing to be able to extract as much moisture out of it as possible, it all starts with these really healthy early roots. And so that was one of the things that stuck out to me was that early root growth that you saw. And again, like you said, important to call out that that yield response came on really high P level soils that we maybe wouldn't have anticipated 12 months ago. Right. So... You know, I'm really excited about this product. I think it's something that everybody should take a look at. Again, super simple, runs right through your planter. So uh, we're already putting a lot of things in that in furrow, you know, uh, but this can play well with it. Justin, thank you so much yep. for your time and for coming Absolutely. out and chatting. Uh, if you have any more questions about Utricia P or the other suite of biologicals that Corteva has, feel free to contact your field agronomist, uh, Pioneer sales rep, or even uh, our Corteva folks, um, territory managers and, and product specialists, as well as, you know, think about talking with your rep about maybe tr uh, funding some true choice dollars into that to help get that at an even, even more uh, economical price. So thank you very much. Hopefully this was, uh, this was informative for you, and we'll see you again. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.